Hello and welcome to this edition of the Boston BioLife Innovation Series. Today we have the pleasure of being with Dr. Frank Schallenberger. He's the president of the American Academy of Ozone Therapy, and they're going to be having their annual meeting, their 12th annual meeting, coming up in Orlando at Marriott Grand Lakes, May 9th through the 11th of this year. So Frank, thank you so much for sharing some insight as to the ozone therapy, the meeting you have coming up, and look forward to hearing more about it. Yeah, thanks for having me here, Joe. So tell me about the American Academy of Ozone Therapy, how you got started, and kind of what some of the things you guys are up to. Yeah, so I've been in medicine for over 50 years now, and about, about mid, uh, mid-1980s, I heard about this thing, ozone therapy, and I went to Germany and I learned about it. I was pretty amazed, hard to believe that it did what they told me it would do. After I came back to the U.S., I have a, a general internal medicine type of practice where I don't specialize in anything. I treat pretty much anything that comes in the door. It could be a cardiovascular disease. It could be an infectious disease. It could be an injury. It could be an autoimmune disease and so forth. So I pretty much treat everything that walks in the door. What I very soon learned very quickly was that ozone therapy worked in just about every patient I gave it to. And I don't want uh, listeners to believe that I found it to be a an independent therapy where you know you didn't use need to use anything else like it's going to fix everything that's not the way it works what the way it works is you know I found that whatever I was doing whether it was you know maybe an antibiotic or uh, a beta blocker or whatever the heck it was that I was doing or even what it was that I was treating if I administered ozone therapy along with what I was doing the results were always better. And sometimes the results were something I so good, I, you know, I didn't even begin to expect that. So I was doing this for about three, four years. And, and I gradually came to the opinion, Joe, that every doctor needs to know how to do this. You know, no matter what specialty they are, they need to know how to do this. Because I know one thing about my colleagues, they all want the best results. They all want their patients to walk out healed and be well. Ozone therapy is something that all doctors can add to their practice and just to fairly dramatically improve their outcomes. So with that in mind, 12 years ago, I started the American Academy of Ozone Therapy. And the idea was to set up training programs and to provide annual meetings where practitioners could exchange ideas, you know, what they're experiencing with ozone therapy so we could all learn more. Yeah, so ozone seems to be one of those enabling technologies or an adjuvant technology that makes other technologies or clinical techniques work better. Is it based on the principle of oxygenation in general, where you're supplying more oxygen to the tissues and in that regard, facilitating some of the metabolic and healing processes, you think? Yeah, that's a really good differentiating question. When we say ozone therapy, actually, we should correctly be saying ozone oxygen therapy because what it is, is that ozone is a gas that consists of three oxygen molecules, whereas the standard oxygen gas consists of two oxygen atoms. So when we use ozone therapy, basically, we collect a gas that is approximately 97% oxygen and 3% ozone. Uh, so it's, it's a mixture of those gases. So two things happen with that gas. One is, as you just alluded to, was oxygenation. You're going you're gonna to oxy, oxygenate wherever you put that gas. Number two, though, is different. It's oxidation. Oxidation being different from oxygenation. Oxygenation refers to just the supplying of oxygen to a tissue that requires it. Oxidation means that when the ozone gets into the tissue, it starts the uh, movement of electrons and forms peroxides. And these peroxides do some absolutely marvelous things in the human body. You know, it's interesting because when you look at the field of longevity, it, everybody talks about aging, right, and anti-aging and whatever the science principles are. But oxygenation and vascular health are, go hand in hand. And we find many enabling technologies like nitric oxide, like hyperbaric oxygen chamber, like looking at the uh, glycocalyx and, and the, the structure of the capillaries really to facilitate the exchange of oxygen deeper in, into more important tissues. And we know that some people characterize aging as a disease of the vascular system. So I think it's important that this therapy, which I know has been around for a long time, we've talked to a bunch of people that have been doing this, 
And I think that it's something like hyperbaric oxygen, like some of these other therapies that we see from the past, that are now being looked at with a new set of eyes. And they're looking at it in conjunction with other therapies for the principles that you just stated. It's an efficient way to create a very powerful supply of oxygen to tissues that may not necessarily have access to it during a normal procedural type. Is that a fair assessment? You brought up process aging. I think the process of aging, pretty well documented that this is in a direct correlation to decreased mitochondrial function. What do mitochondria do? Well, actually do a lot of things, but their main job is to process oxygen. And so anything that can help them do that, and by the way, ozone therapy is a dramatic uh, stimulant of mitochondrial activation. When you really look at it, when people have diseases, and it really doesn't matter exactly what the diseases are, the attributes of ozone therapy by doing such things as inducing NRF2 activation, inducing cytokines, uh, releasing stem cells, releasing endothelial progenitor cells, which you just you know alluded to the uh, endothelium and uh, the glycocalyx. Ozone does all that. It releases the endothelial progenitor cells, which repair the glycocalyx. It releases nitric oxide. It releases hemoxygenase one, which stimulates angiogenesis. And when you look at all the effects of this particular kind of therapy, you can easily understand how it would be so helpful to use in virtually any disease, whether it be cardiovascular or infectious or whether it be oncological, no matter what the disease or condition is, including the very process of aging, this molecule can do dramatic things to help process that patient along towards a, a goal of healing. Well, clearly you're passionate about this. I could hear it in your voice, but I think what's also exciting from where, where I sit, is that we've got all these technology providers that are now looking at all this novel ways of delivering these technologies. And we've talked to another one of your, your vendors, O3 Purity, and they've got a whole line of products that I don't think existed five years ago, where they literally have the ability to create an ozone delivery solution for almost every part of the body and every clinical application, including individualized, personalized precision, do it yourself. And I think that's an important part of medicine where people are starting to look at the body as a whole. Patients are getting more involved. People are looking at the fundamental science and biology, like you mentioned, the mitochondria, the role of oxygen, and how it affects things like aging and cardiovascular disease. And they're starting to put two and two together and figuring out, well, this plus this, with the patient being part of it, being engaged, actively educated on the process, really gives you the best opportunity to provide a better outcome than what you might have otherwise, if you were even able to handle some of these you know, more complex clinical things. Like in the wound care market, you see a lot of difficult, complex wounds, and we know that this type of technology really helps those as well. Yeah, that is so right and well said. An analogy that people can think of is simply one of you know working in your garden. The patient comes in and you want to give them a therapy to uh, make things better and to help them with their symptoms or their disease. It's very analogous to, uh, you know, going out in your garden and planting a seed and expecting that, you know, to develop into a plant that you can use. But that soil is what it's all about. If you put that seed in the wrong soil, nothing is going to happen or very little is going to happen. So in order to get the most out of that seed, you need to prepare that soil and get it just right. And to that extent that you can do that, you're going to get a much better plant. And this is the true for human beings. They come into our office. They're just in bad shape all over. In fact, they have cardiovascular diseases, not due to just one thing. It's due to a breakdown of many, many different systems. Uh, the fact that they have a, a long-term infectious disease they can't get rid of. Same idea. There's such a focus these days on, uh, quote, repairing the soil in the patients, building them up either with vitamins or minerals or stem cells or platelets or whatever the process is. In this case, it would be with ozone. But we need to not just administer the therapies that we know can help these patients. We need to actually improve their overall cellular condition. And ozone's so, so good at that. And it works right along with everything else that people are doing, whether I mentioned stem cells or platelets or you know other growth factors. Uh, angiogenic factors, all those kinds of things. It works great with all those things, makes them all work better. Yeah, and I think there's more of an awareness of an inflammatory disease. So a lot of times we hear our 
scientists talk about the cell danger response and the role of mitochondria mm. and how things like the gut leads to a suppressed immune system, which triggers extracellular ATP, which this causes this immune suppression, which allows things like lupus and Lyme and Crohn's and chronic fatigue syndrome and reflex sympathetic dystrophy. And if, depending who you talk to, is really the cornerstone of all the modern inflammatory conditions that nobody can figure out and nobody can treat. Mm -hmm. And it leads to the more advanced ones like ALS, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So they say type 3 diabetes is Alzheimer's. I think that there are more physicians now, more healthcare providers, prim primarily in private practice, and maybe more of the AFRM or age management elk out there that see the, see the role of, the inf of inflammation. They see the role of, of the cell danger response in their patients every day. So them buying into a technology like this today versus even five years ago, I think is a factor of a magnitude greater than it would be otherwise, just because of all the education that functional medicine has brought and now the adoption, a lot of these principles and tests have made it a difference, right? People can now test for more things easily -er than they could in the past. There's still a long way to go before you can test for lots of stuff that matters versus what primary care does. So I think that you, what you're doing is an amazing thing because you've clung to a, a, a pretty well historically understood technology it's been around for a while right and people have been using it but now it seems as if it's coming into its own because people are starting to appreciate it for what it does versus say what it's called right ozone yeah. seem like yeah. kind of a thing but now what are we doing we're increasing the supply of oxygen to tissues that need it and we've got all these new ways of doing that with devices and so i think what you're doing is super important what can people learn at your upcoming conference in orlando you know, we have all kinds of presentations at that conference, whether it's a cardiologist or a dentist or a neurologist or a naturopathic doctor, a homeopath. All kinds of physicians are, and other practitioners are members of our academy, and we all get together and meet uh, once a year. The presentations are always good, like this year, for example, we've got some very prominent key speakers that are going to speak about the aging process, not everything we talk about is strictly related to ozone. So we do talk a lot about specifics of how ozone can be used in certain clinical cases. I'm going to talk specifically about how ozone can be used in uh, cardiovascular cases. And our president, who happens to be a dentist, he's going to be talking about, uh, you know, how it can be used in the dental profession. Then we're going to have people that are in the anti-aging sphere They'll be talking about that. We use it a lot for detoxification. There's a lot of new techniques coming out now that involve heavily circulated extracorporeal circulation devices that uh, oxygenate and ozonate blood and at the same time put it through a dialysis. Mm -hmm. There's other techniques that uh, give uh, very strong doses of ozone and certain machines out now that are making the, the, uh, the technology of how ozone is administered much more advanced than it has been in, in the past. We also get into frequency, especially light frequency. So we, we have presenters that are going to be talking about ultraviolet light and how ultraviolet light affects the hemoglobin molecule and, and does things very similar to what uh, ozone can do. And so it's it's a broad uh, conference. It's not simply all about ozone, but it is all about the basic idea of getting us to be as healthy as we possibly can be. I didn't even mention it, but you know, some of these diseases you talked about, ALS and Alzheimer's, these are diseases that actually destroy tissue. And, and at some point, these diseases become uh, irreversible. So you know, the idea is to start treating our patients that have a vulnerability for a certain disease and treating them early on before they get the disease even, or certainly in the very earliest stages of the possible presentation of the disease. We can do really great things with neurodegenerative disease if we get it early enough. And all these things work together like that. So, you know, there's also the aspect of using uh, oxygen ozone therapies in healthy people to keep them that way. I know I personally do that. And you know, I'm hopeful that all our practitioners that uh, are treating their patients with these therapies, even even if, if our practitioner is 100% healthy, I think it's a great idea to administer to ourselves so we stay that way. 
No, that's great stuff. And I, you know, I really think that what you put together is an amazing opportunity for healthcare providers to learn from the decades of experience that you and your colleagues have and to really dive into all the relevant aspects of anti-aging, but really helping people with complex diseases. The one thing that I always kind of consider when I think about this field that we're in, and I get a kind of unique position to see a lot of companies, a lot of organizations, and a lot of technologies, which I enjoy. But I see it across the spectrum of diseases. And I think there's a lot of emphasis put on health and beauty, looking nice and feeling good and looking good. But really, if you can affect somebody that has a very difficult condition and really help them with the science of these technologies, I think that it has a lot more meaning to it because people suffer in ways that traditional medicine just can't help. And oftentimes we find patients, and I work with a couple of groups that have patient advocacy, like Bernie Siegel and the Healthspan Action Coalition. Mm -hmm. I'm attracted to them because those patient groups, those advocates are trying to help patient care populations that don't have a lot of options. And ozone seems like the type of thing that really can help people from a wide range of, of clinical afflictions and really help bring a higher quality life to, to what they're going through. And when it's properly used, Joe, ozone therapy is 100% safe. And you might could get a headache. You might could get nauseated. That's possible. But that doesn't happen very often. And it, it's just the, the safest, easiest to administer therapy that you can possibly imagine. The other thing about ozone therapy is it's inexpensive. This is, we're not talking about procedures that are necessarily going to cost tens of thousands of dollars. The expense and the safety are other driving factors that make it really practic practical for doctors, no matter what their specialty is, to add this into what they're already doing. So how can people learn more about the meeting? I see your website here, aaot.us. Is that where people can learn about the upcoming That's meeting? Right. Uh, you've got a whole description there. They'll list all the speakers. For anybody out there listening to me just wants to be informed even more, they could just register with the executive secretary of the academy and uh, we'll be, be sure to put them on our email mailing list so that they can get any of the email blasts we send out because we regularly send out email blasts of things that are interesting or new in the world of ozone therapy. Well, that's fantastic. I'm looking forward to coming to the meeting because I haven't been to an ozone therapy meeting in my life, although I've worked with a couple people that have presented on it. And I think it makes sense. And so thank you very much for uh, all the hard work that you've done, Dr. Schellenberger. And thanks for sharing your experience and your enthusiasm and the American Academy of Ozone Therapy with uh, the listeners of Boston BioLife. And I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us here today. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to get this word out. All right, we're going to see you May 9th in lovely Orlando. Great. We'll have a good time. All right, thank you very much.